So let's do that. Bow, bow, bow. Buddy. How's it going? It's Mike with this old hot rod. Appreciate you checking back in with me and seeing what I'm up to. Uh, it's, geez, I don't even know. It's Friday. It's the end of the week, beginning of the weekend. I'm in the garage. What I'm working on. I grabbed a battery from up behind my house. This is the battery that I believe was on my trailer. My winch. But my winch kind of crapped out on me before I went to Carlisle last year and I haven't replaced everything so I removed the battery and I have the battery here I think this is a pretty decent sized battery it's probably something that I'll be able to use in the car so I'll go grab a new one when the time comes but what I need to do is I need to build some type of a battery tray or basket to mount the battery in I know typically back in the day they would just mount the battery in the trunk and be done with it uh, I'm gonna set it down in the trunk just a little bit just to kind of give it its own place but in order to build the trunk floor I need to have this in place beforehand I'm gonna set it in like this in front of the rear cross member where the frame kicks up so this portion of the battery will be in deeper into the floor and then the floor kind of slopes down and then you I'll have the gas tank here in front of it uh, I I'm gonna put it high enough where I have still enough room to run my exhaust out the back and all that stuff so as long as I play my cards right I should be able to get away with it I was measuring well first off I was measuring the battery to figure out the height of the battery and how deep I want to go battery seven and a half inches tall on the back side towards the rear axle I'm just going to go five and a half inches down. And then on the front, it's going to be whatever it's going to be. So I didn't bother measuring that. So what I want to do is, so seven and a half inches. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to build the sheet metal pocket for it first. I'm going to set that down in. I'm going to make my measurements. And then I'm going to build the actual basket or the structure that's going to, actually you know hold the battery in place I'll be able to have a strap for the top and all that stuff so I'm gonna grab a square I'm gonna draw a starting point for myself so that's gonna be my starting point so now I'm gonna measure my seven and a half inches but I want to measure it seven and a half inches up so now what I need to do is measure the width of the battery so the width of the battery is six inches so the length of my battery I don't know what I did wrong but I measured I didn't measure the battery wide enough yes I did I just didn't make my marks correctly one two three four five. Oh no I'm sorry my battery is actually seven inches wide Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace the bottom of my battery. That's going to be the base of my battery tray. So I measured 7.5 inches back, 7.5, 7.5, 7.5. So I'm going to make those, I'm going to do those real quick. I need to make a box out of this and in order to do that I need to make these measurements out and then I need to add some additional metal on the edges so I can bend them I'll show you I'm sure most of you know but for the people who don't show you why I'm doing this so each one of these is gonna fold up but on at least two of them I need to create some extra tabs or some flanges and I'm gonna do that so that flange will wrap around 
that flange will go up and wrap around the sides, the edges. And again, this is just the metal box that the battery is going to sit in. I'm going to have a metal cage that goes underneath this box. That will be the real main structure of it. So this is a bend line, that's a cut line. So I just mark everything off with a C or a B. So cut, cut, cut. This is a bend, bend, bend. So that is going to be the basic layout of my battery. So I'll show you. So you can see here, the battery is going to be here. This tab will fold up, this will fold up, that will fold up, and that will fold up. These flanges will then wrap around these corners. And then I'll be able to tack weld, spot weld, do whatever. So let's get this cut out real quick. Get some scissors. My most favorite scissors ever. Which they're really not. Let's get it cut out. Something about doing sheet metal, only when it when it goes smooth, it's just something very gratifying about it. But I think that's anything, I suppose. Hi, Allison. Hi, Mikey. Did you bring your scissors? Nope. What? I hope my enchiladas come out good. Did you make them yet? We're making them now. I am starving. You are? Yeah. I'm not really starving. Well, I eat a banana when you talk to me. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. I'm glad you listened to me for once. One time. Uh, yeah, so? Yeah, so, yeah. Use your words, honey. Use your words. Mm. Yeah, I can do that. You can do it. No, I don't want to. It's I'm busy. Look at, look at, I'm busy. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in outside I'm school. in the middle of something. You're in outside school. Yeah, this is true. I am. Wait, well, we'll be done in like 15 minutes. Honey, are you for real? Yeah, so oh yeah. Are you for real? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do a trial run in my break to make sure I can actually do what it is I'm setting out to do. If I were to bend, put this in the metal break and bend this side, I wouldn't be able to bend these tabs. I'd have to actually hammer form these over the edge of my table, and I don't want to do that. So what I'm thinking is if I were to take this this line here or this line put that in my break then i can bend this tab and then these two tabs at the same time repeat the process over here bend those at the same time then spin it and then when i bend this up these tabs should go up so i'm going to bend this one first this one second yeah this one first this one second this one third this one fourth. So I'm going to just write it down. So one, two, three, and four. So let's go give it a quick trial run and see how it goes. And I said before, what's nice about this RAM board is you can actually put it in a break. And when you bend it to shape, it kind of holds its shape, which is a huge help. All right, so that's my first bend. All right, so what I need to do is remove some fingers from my brake. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So because I need to bend this line here, if I were to close these, this jaw down, it would bend these flanges back down. But what, you, what I do, or what you're supposed to do, is all these fingers are different widths, or there's multiple different widths. I have it spaced out a little bit because I have one of a, one or two of them already removed. And it kind of makes it easy for situations like this. I can kind of just, I can kind of figure out which one will get me where I need to be. And I just wanted to say thank you to Earl. Earl is a local hot rodder. He lives the next town over from me. And he just popped in. He got to see the 34 in person. It was great to finally meet you, Earl. So I appreciate you taking a ride by. And, spending a couple hours here and talking and just telling stories about days gone by and the cars he's driven and owned and 
you know some of the projects he's had and his current car that he drives now the shoe box so I uh, just really appreciate you popping by and and saying hello it's nice to nice to meet some of the people that that follow along on the channel so uh, that being said it's it just just went in the house grabbed a bite to eat and I'm in the garage and I'm gonna get to work on the car and I'll show you guys where I'm at I kind of did a quick mock-up of this the other day what I need to do is I need to transfer this little box over onto some sheet metal I was running out of metal I only had one half of a sheet left I nailed it by the way so I ran up to the steel supply house I got two more sheets of 18 gauge uh, I don't really need all of it but I figured it'd be nice to have it so went and grabbed that so I can get this box made up and what I'm gonna do is when I mock up this battery box I'll show you my battery real quick so on this battery I made it so obviously the I don't know if this little plastic thing comes up yeah the drain it, it'll fit right over the battery is going to fit in it pretty tight so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this made out of sheet metal to fit that battery so when it comes time to put a battery in the car I'll just go I'll go to AutoZone and I'll grab the same size battery after I get this built what I'm going to do is kind of put this in place on the car and then I'm actually going to make a metal structure out of this one inch flat stock 3 sixteenths by one inch I'm going to build the cage that this will sit into and then I'll have the battery box and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this to fit the shape of the floor essentially what you're going to see is you'll see this much of the battery back here on the back so only this much will be sticking up out of the floor and then obviously it's going to drop down towards the gas tank the gas tank is going to be in this area it'll be only set down into the floor of the car a little bit in the trunk at this point so as you can see here so that's going to be the side profile of the battery I'll build a cover for it after the fact probably do some type of an upholstery in the trunk later on but for now I want to at least get this battery box built out of metal get it put in the car get everything set where it needs to be build my little cradle that it's going to go into and then at that point I can then start working on the sheet metal that's going to cover the floor of the trunk area all right I'm going to grab my contour SCT get this sheet cleaned up and then I'm going to open this battery box up get it all folded out magnet help you know secure it to this piece of sheet metal and then get it templated and cut out I'll bend it up on the on my box pan brake and get it set in the car. Yep, I'll wipe the oil off of this so I can get it cleaned up. Grab my battery box. Boom. And so it begins. No caller ID. We don't answer those. And I hope you don't answer those either. Public service announcement. Don't answer no caller ID phone calls. Alright, something like that. Gotcha. Oh!
grinder. I've had this one for quite a while now and it's certainly paid its dues. I think it's in here now, the break. Well, I think she's all done. I've got a small one here with no guard that I don't particularly like using. But, in the sake of trying to get this, I don't even have a tool to use get the disc off. It's not looking good guys. Not looking good. I don't know where all my channel locks are. No channel locks up here. Why I hate using this one. I it's spinning. I'm not using that thing. No way in hell am I using that. Well, I had to go buy a new grinder or whatever you call those. Is it a grinder? Yeah, angle grinder. The cord was messed up on the other one and I wasn't going to deal with it. So that being said, I got a new one. Quick trip to, what do you call it, tractor supply. And I'm back in business. And it was on sale. So if you need one, run down to your local tractor supply and pick up a DeWalt four and a half inch angle mini grinder with a paddle switch. Thought that was kind of neat. I missed it. Naturally. Where's the tool? It didn't come with the tool. You gotta be kidding, Mary! Is it in it? What are the odds the one I have will fit it? Not good enough, apparently. So, that's the way my day is going. That's exactly how my day has gone so far. They give me an Allen wrench. Why give me an Allen wrench? I 
They gave me an Allen wrench. Tell me why. Tell me the f why. Alright, I had my little tantrum. I think someone might have bought this. I think someone purchased this and took the tool out of it because this actually looks... I don't want to say it's used. But I think someone bought it and returned it and kept the tool. So, I guess I can't blame DeWalt for that. I need to do it is I think I need to bend these edges first this is the most complex because I'm bending the flanges too that are gonna tie in the four corners So I want to bend those first because that's more of the bend I've been doing. to bend it I'm not going to be able to bend it the whole way because this metal is going to hit the front of the brake so that is as far as I'm going to be able to bend the two end panels but the reason I wanted to do the other ones first is because at this point now I only have to bend this one edge up and then the other edge if I did it the opposite way and bent these these ends first I would have to then bend the flanges and these pieces up and that would have just been a lot more work so at this point now that's what my battery tray looks like I need to actually bend these back out because I want these flanges to be on the outside I think we'll see we'll figure it out but for now that's what my battery box looks like and bring it over to the table and get it bent the rest of the way all right so I was just saying I, th I was thinking that I would put the tabs on the battery box around the outside but I don't see any harm in putting them in the inside unless the battery won't fit more or less going to be my battery box and let me see if my battery fits the easier way to test it I suppose is to check it from the top if I can't put it all the way down because I don't want the positive and negative terminals to hit Boy, is that tight. 
That fits like a glove. That is dead on. Uh, and again, it's not going to be this high. I'm going to end up building a cover to go over it, or naga hide, or something, but uh, some type of a hold down. I mean, it fits. But as I was just saying, I don't know if I should bend these down, bend the tabs out a little, and have the tabs on the outside. Uh, I think it's cleaner on the inside. But I don't want it so tight that I'm not going to be able to get the battery out. God forbid I ever need to. Yeah, well, I think I'm gonna tack it in place. Happen. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it in there. I'll get it tacked in place. Mm. this box is going to get cut away I'm just getting it to hold its shape so I can get it mounted in the car where it needs to be If I can get it out now. <laughs> oh, it's got a handle on it. Oh, let's see. <laughs> it might be a, just a touch too tight. It's coming, but I'm thinking that's going to be too tight. What are your thoughts? I bent this over and I was just banging on it. I think it's keeping the battery in there. Yeah. And again, a lot of this is going to be removed. More than 50% of this battery box is going to be removed. So, I think once the, 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 the majority of it's removed, I'll have access, better access to the battery. At least I know it's not going to go anywhere. It held its shape good. Tack welding it together. And it's a nice battery box. When I plan... What I thought I could do is attach a couple of magnets, but it's not going to hold. So I guess I just got to more or less eyeball it. So I'm going to try to mimic that contour around the sides and then the line across the front. Cut this battery tray down. And then what I want to do is, I had said before, I want to take this 3 16 flat stock and build a cradle that comes down the bottom just so I have some, some structure underneath it. And then I'll be able to set that battery box in here. I'm not going to attach it to the floor yet because I want to be able to remove it because I'm going to have to run my battery cable and all that stuff down the frame rail. I won't have access to that frame rail if I install it 100%. I'm an inch from the bottom up on this side and four inches, which is the thickness of the frame, on the back side.
clamp these together a little bit, get these tack welded on the inside edges where they're kind of sticking out some, and then get this kind of cleaned up. You know, these sometimes these little projects take hours and hours, but they're fun little projects because it's something you can start start after lunchtime or in the afternoon after work and, and get it done by the end of the night. So those are fun little projects to do. My battery tray is gonna be wanted it on the opposite side of the gas tank filler maybe I can attach it to the floor panel when I build the floor panel and then bend my flange then and then set it down inside the cradle yeah I think actually what I'll do is I'll follow the same height as these ones which will be to the top of it and then I'll go straight back so battery box might be just a touch higher than I expected but that's fine I think it's still gonna work out fine I can always modify the sides and cut them down if I want to but I think that's a good plan so let's get some flat stock measured cut welded so as everybody knows it's probably an hour's worth of work and two hours worth of sitting staring at stuff figuring it out exactly how it is you want to do something so so I'm going to make some quick measurements and then I'll get get the everything cut. Basically how it's gonna go and it's got the battery's gonna sit obviously level I'm gonna weld that right there in place so let's get that taken care of I want it to be level with the top of this structure in the floor to get it tacked in place do is get it set at zero degrees it's perfect exactly where I measured it right underneath it's 0 0.6 and that's with no fuel in the car the fuel in the car it'll drop down a touch more obviously just eyeballed it you know as far as the space this is 
just kind of a this is the preliminary support and then I guess the secondary is the actual battery box or, or vice versa hello Hi. what's up honey hold on one second I just gotta weld one thing What's going on? No. No. Can I drop that like sweatshirt off the like, This whole hot rod? Whatever. You could have donated it to one of my fans. <laughs> Alright, that's it right there. It's right. Perfect. Alright, that's my battery tray. Awesome! Uh, hey everyone. So that's that's going to be it for me on the battery box in the in the support the structure underneath the battery box. Um, getting a little bit late, so I figured I'd head into the house and and kind of you know just hang out with Allie for the night. So thanks again, everybody. I appreciate everyone watching. Appreciate all the new subscribers and everybody that's been commenting and liking the videos. I'm finishing up the back end of the car now. I'm finishing up the battery box, obviously. I want to get the sheet metal done so I'm then able to get the structure welded. And then once that structure is welded and I know everything's set to where it needs to be, I'm going to get to work on the pedals. Uh, that's really the next big, I want to say, like mechanical uh, project that needs to get done on the coupe. Um, get a few little things I have to do after that, like remove the oil filter on the passenger side. On a, on a 371 Oldsmobile, they have two... They have two separate oil filters, one on the pan and one on the motor. I need to remove one of them because it's going to interfere with the exhaust and the starter changeover. Um, my intents are to get the car out to the exhaust shop probably in the next couple of weeks. Uh, you guys will see that online. I'll post it up when it's being trailered over there. So, With that being said, I'm going to wrap up this video now. And again, thanks everybody. I appreciate it. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.